Right. So this is it, huh? This is the way it's going to be. Today is uh, May 10th. Oh, is this the oh, is video? This the video, yeah, this is the video. Oh, wow. We were looking at this. This is going to be This is the video. This is your... I know, I know. You have to say, what did you say, the date? Yeah. Today's May 10th, 2010. <laughs> and, I love uh, your narration on hope. You're getting married in uh, 47 days, is it? 47, yeah. Was that yeah. June 19th? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. So that's 47 yeah. days? That's it. Yeah. Wow. That's right. Okay. All right. It's very exciting. And this is my Star moon. My moon. My moon. All right. All right. Fidelity and family. Because of the bill's yearnings for security, safe haven, and connection that express our common humanity, civil marriage is an esteemed institution, and the decision whether and whom to marry is among life's momentous acts of self-definition. The benefits accessible only by way of a marriage license are enormous, touching nearly every aspect of life and death. It is undoubtedly for these concrete reasons, as well as for its intimately personal significance, that civil marriage has long been termed a civil right. So we understand that it's not typical to quote a Massachusetts Supreme Court justice, or even mention social and political issues at the beginning of a wedding ceremony. But hey, it's not a mental setting. <laughs> if any of you have sat at their dinner table recently, you know that fighting against social injustice is central to this couple's existence. Both in their work and beyond, the two have shown a commitment to improving their surrounding community. Matt, as he seeks to ensure that the voices of New York's marginalized populations are represented, and Rachel, through social work, empowering teenagers by giving them the tools to prevent violence. And what this partnership means to you. So in the loving presence of your family and friends, I ask you now to step back and share your vows as you exchange your rings. So. Yeah. 
after sharing these amazing thoughts and feelings with each other, we're nearing the end of your ceremony. And I would just like to invite Matt Reed to join Rachel and Matt for the breaking of the glass. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I was going to do it. So I'm presenting the glass that will be broken by these two lovely individuals. And I just want to say a couple quick things about what this role is in the tradition and what it means with them and, and why it's so important. Um, I've known this kid for almost 25 years. Um, and in this time, one of the reasons why I think we connected so well was I, growing up in the Bronx, not many people from Manhattan would venture to the Bronx, but this kid did. And, and it, it all comes to this idea of when when we break the glass, there's injustices, and, and Matt and Rachel fight for those continuously. And the fact that Matt, at such a, such a young age with both his parents, bringing him up and realizing that he didn't just have to live within his community and he could go out, his parents are a part of that. They allowed him and wanted him to see that, and that's why this works so well. And when we break the glass, we celebrate their love, but we also remember these injustices. And as we know who these two lovely people are, Rachel, I've grown to love you even more every day, every time I hear these stories that Matt tells about you, um, <laughs> and the fact that you deal with all of his things and his stories, and the ice cream and everything, and it's, it's a beautiful relationship with Matt. I love you, you're my brother, and I'm going to present this to just break it all to pieces, and when they do, you all say Mazel Tov if you don't know that. So. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay.